This is Dr. B.D. Vai Sunil, Associate Professor, Mechanical Engineering Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. In this session, we will be learning the introduction to engineering mechanics, basics of engineering mechanics and its classification, and the fundamental laws of mechanics. Coming to the introduction of the subject, the branch of physical science that deals with the state of rest or the state of motion of a body or particle is termed as mechanics. And application of laws of mechanics such as Newtonian mechanics, Einstein's relativistic mechanics and quantum mechanics to the field problem is termed as the engineering mechanics. Uh, this can be treated as the definition of engineering mechanics. In this definition, if you observe carefully, the term particle or a body is the term used for the object which we consider in the problem. Uh, the particle or bo body may be as small as a molecule or as big as a building. It is a general term used for the object being considered in the problem. Also, the term field problem refers to the problem in practical applications, that is, a real-time application. Now let us discuss the classification of engineering mechanics. The broad classification of engineering mechanics can be given into mechanics of solids, and mechanics of fluids. The solid mechanics is classified into mechanics of rigid bodies and mechanics of deformable bodies. A rigid body is one which is the distance between two particles in the body will not change in any position or condition of the whole body that is even when various forces are acting on the body whereas a deformable body is one in which the distance varies with position and time. In rigid body mechanics, we have statics and dynamics. Static is the condition where the particle is at rest and we study the characteristics of that particle. Whereas dynamic is the condition where the particle is in motion and we study the characteristics. Studying the characteristics of a static particle is simple and easy, but a particle in dynamic condition will be considered in two ways, kinematics and kinetics. Kinematics is the part of the dynamics concerned with the study of motion of particles without considering the force, which is the cause of the motion. A particle will be in motion only when a force causes it to move or change its position. And if we study the characteristics of the body in motion without considering that force, then it is called as kinematics. Whereas, if we consider the forces causing the motion of the body and study the characteristics, then it is termed as kinetics. Mechanics of deformable bodies is classified into theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity. Mechanics of fluid mechanics, the types of fluids seen are ideal, viscous and compressible, incompressible fluids. For our present study, we will learn the static and dynamic conditions of a particle. We will see various laws configuring the system, various methods to solve the field problems in mechanics, etc. Now let us see what are the various laws of mechanics which are the basis for the problem solving in engineering mechanics. Archimedes, Galileo, Sir Isaac Newton, Einstein, Wagner, Euler, D. Lambert are some of the great scientists or inventors who have contributed a lot to the de development of the mechanics. The fundamental laws of mechanics may be given as Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law. Newton's law of gravitation, law of transmissibility of forces and parallelogram law of forces. You have already studied about the Newton's laws in your previous years. Let us briefly recollect them and clearly understand what the fundamental laws of mechanics are. Newton's first law states that every body continues in its state or of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled by an external agency acting on it. This gives us an idea that unless a force is acted upon, the body will continue to stay in its current state of movement or rest. The state of body to continue its current mode is termed as inertia. This can be easily understood by imagining as a body in outer space. When the body is moving in outer space, it continues to move in the same straight path until another body obstructs its path or an external agent in the form of force or pressure 
or torque is acted to change its direction or velocity. Newton's second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the impressed force and it takes place in the direction of the force acting on it. Thus, this law did deduces the equation of force that is force is equal to mass into acceleration that is F is equal to ma. Newton's third law is a very effective law and we all remember it perfectly. It states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Let us see a small animation for understanding this. Let us consider a tennis ball falling from a certain height. When the ball hits the ground, it executes a force on the ground which is called as an action. Because of this force acted on the ground, the response of the ground will also be in the form of a force acted on the ball in reverse direction of the action which is called as reaction. The reaction force will be equal in magnitude of the action force and in the same line of the action force. Let's go to the next fundamental law that is Newton's law of gravitation. This law states that every body attracts the other body. The force of attraction between any two bodies is directly proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. For understanding this, let us consider two bodies of different masses M1 and M2 which are at a distance d. Now this gives the formula F is equal to g m1 m2 by d square. The force of attraction F between the bodies is given as F is equal to g into m1 m2 by d square where g is the constant of proportionality and is known as constant of gravitation. Now let us see the law of transmissibility of forces. This law states that the state of rest or motion of a rigid body is unaltered if a force acting on the body is replaced by another force of the same magnitude and direction but acting anywhere on the body along the line of action of the replaced force. In the figure, the dotted lines are the line of actions of the forces acting on the body. The equal symbol is given because when the same magnitude force is replaced anywhere on the line of action of the force, there won't be any change in the condition of the body. That is, if a body is moving because of a force applied in a particular direction, then there won't be any change in speed and direction of the motion of the body when that same magnitude force is replaced anywhere along the line of action of the applied force. The next fundamental law which we will which we will see is the parallelogram law of forces. This law is useful in representing or identifying the resultant force of two concurrent forces. The law states that if two forces acting simultaneously on a body at a point are represented in magnitude and direction by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram which passes through the point of intersection of the two sides representing the forces. For understanding this law, consider two forces P and Q acting on a body at a point O at an angle of theta. Now if we represent these forces as two adjacent sides of the parallelogram, and complete the parallelogram OACB then the diagonal of this parallelogram that is OC will be the resultant of the two forces P and Q. In the figure the resultant of the two forces P and Q is R acting at an angle alpha to the horizontal. There are other ways to find the resultant force of the forces acting on a body using derived laws. The derived laws are the triangle law of forces and polygonal law of forces. Triangle law of forces state that if two forces acting on a body are represented by one after another by sides of a triangle, the resultant is represented by the closing side of the triangle taken from first point to the last. For understanding this law, consider two forces P and Q 
acting at point O on a body at an angle of theta. If we represent these forces as the sides of a triangle in same magnitude and direction one after the other, that is, first, if we represent force P in magnitude and direction, then we have to represent the force Q starting from the end point of P in magnitude and direction. Thus, the closing side of the triangle from O to B will be the resultant acting at an angle alpha. The polygonal law of forces is also similar to the triangle law of forces. This law is useful if there are more than two forces acting at a point on the body. The procedure for obtaining the resultant for all the forces acting is same as triangle law where all the forces will be represented one after the other in continuous manner to make a polygon. And the final closing side of the polygon from starting point to the end point will be the resultant of all the forces. In the figure, the resultant of the forces A, B, C, D and E is R, which is the closing side of the polygon formed by all the forces and the direction of the resultant is formed from starting point of A to the ending point of E. This concludes the session. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.